Hello. Today I'd like to show you how I work with some brush cottons or cotton flannels to make a, a fun raw edged or raggy quilt. So I've used just squares of fabric and it's the flannel and I've used them front and back and you can see that the back side of the quilt is all neat and tidy and I know in some people's opinion this is the right side but um, in actual fact the, the effect we're after is on this side which is all raggy and I know that it's a very cuddly quilt and uh, small people love to just sit and fiddle with all that fluffiness. So this is just fun and it's just using the flannel fabrics. I haven't pre-washed my fabric or anything and the batting I've used in there is the Hobbs um, Cotton Poly 8020 blend which is a really nice batting. I use that a lot so I get a lot of leftovers um, and little strips and pieces left from bigger quilts and so this is a really good way of using up some of these oddments of batting. So I've got an oddment here and I'm going to show you how I cut it. So I'll just show you everything um, that I do from scratch just so that you know exactly what to do when you want to make one. So I'll start off with cutting some batting squares. So as you can see I've got this odd shaped piece of batting and I'm going to use the markings on my ruler to help me line it up so I can cut a straight edge here. So this fold most likely is straight so we should just straighten up that edge there with my ruler. I've got a nice long ruler for this. You want to be able to cut right through. I have actually got two layers. You can manage to do two layers of this batting but if you're not too sure about that just one layer is good too. So because you've got to hold it fairly firm because it wants to move around. It's a little bit spongy. So I'm just going to trim that off. And now the squares I'm cutting are six and a half inches square. So I'm going to come along here till I get to six and a half inches on my board and I can line that up with my ruler. I've actually got a half inch marker on my ruler which is really helpful to line up there. So I'm going to now cut six and a half inches away from that edge on my right. And I can continue on like that. I can just keep cutting, coming along another six and a half inches out to here. Rather than moving the fabric all the time, I would just keep going to get as many as I can out of that piece. And then I would turn these around and cut them the other way. So I'll just do this one just to show you how, how I would do that. And then after that, I won't keep cutting. I'll just show you something else. Um, so again, just trim up those ends so that there's a nice straight edge at that end. And same thing, just come along the six and a half inches. And again. And then you've only got real little scraps at the end of all that, which we won't worry about today. So there's my squares. I've cut them two at a time. So I've got those just waiting there now. And so then when I cut the flannel fabric, the same thing. I'll just show you quickly how I've cut those squares. I've actually already cut from my length of fabric a strip that's six and a half inches wide. And I've got it folded over in half. And I'm going to line again, line that up with my cutting board so that I've got it nice and straight. And I'm going to cut the selvages off the end. And then I'm going to cut along, move my ruler along to cut here at six and a half inches. So the squares of batting and the squares of fabric are cut the same size. And so out of one strip, the full width of a fabric, you can get six six and a half inch squares. Just that might help you with some of your calculations. Um, and again, I've cut them two together, so that's quite speedy. So six and a half inch squares, uh, strips off your fabric, and then into six and a half inch squares. So six and a half inch squares of fabric, six and a half inch squares of batting is what I've used. Now I have, I'm just working on a small quilt here that I'm going to show you, and I've just chosen a nice blue and yellow um, soft colorway so that you can see how I'm doing this and I'll sew some together to show you how I achieve that. And on the other side it's coming up with all the seams quite neat. So to start doing that I've got my fabrics and some squares. So first of all I'm going to lay down one of the blue, because I'm alternating my colors, I'll lay down a blue one. Then on top of that I lay a square of batting. 
There's nothing complicated about this, but it does get a little bit bulky for sewing. And then I'm going to pick up one of the yellow squares and lay that on top. So I've got this lovely little sandwich here. Now I'm going to be sewing two of these together. So I'm just going to keep stacking for the moment. You could make all your squares up ready like that to pick up, but because I'm just working in a small area at the moment, I'm just going to keep going. So I'm going to lay a blue one right sides together with that now. Then another batting. As you can see, it's getting quite thick. And then another yellow square. So facing each other, because I'm doing the alternating color, I've got a blue and a yellow. And I've got a blue and a yellow top and bottom. Now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and sew down here. And this is very thick, so if you've got a walking foot or a built-in dual feed, that would be really helpful at this stage. It's not essential, um, but it certainly does help. What the dual feed or walking foot does is it feeds from the top as well. So when you've got a spongy area, it helps feed it through evenly for you. And the other thing I'm going to do is, is take a, quarter, uh, sorry, a half inch seam allowance. So rather than the normal quarter inch we use in patchwork, I'm going to take half an inch. And you need half an inch um, because it's going to, got to fluff up a little bit when you do all the washing. So I'm going to pop that in and sew half an inch away from that edge. So just a regular seam, but half an inch wide. So it is quite thick, but this is probably the area you'll just have to be a little bit careful. Okay. Now if you're using specific fabrics on the back that are different to the ones on the front, you would be needing to put your backing fabrics right sides together at that point. They're going to be on the back. So I'm going to just join one more on now. So I'm just laying down my square of um, fabric and it will be the blue one that goes on the bottom. Then my batting. And then another square because I'm going to want a yellow one on top now. Now I've got to be careful now not to just flip that over and sew it the wrong way. So I've actually got to flip that over and put that on there. And now I'm going to sew that seam there and that's going to give me the seam that I'm looking for there. So back to the sewing machine. Remember half inch seams. makes itself and quilts itself all at once so it's it's a great quilt for using up bits and pieces all your squares could be different like in my other sample of the quilt now I'm just going to show you now that I've I've done that much how I would join the rows together because you would just keep adding if you're going to make longer rows so my the right sides of my back go together and for this because of the bulk I'm going to open out the seam so I press out or open out both of those and you could put a pin there if you like to I'm not very good with pins and now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew all the way along opening those seams as I get to them so the same thing the half inch seam allowance opening out those seams and making sure they match. So there I've got to the other end of the seam and you can see here that I've opened out my seams on both sides and on the other side that's all kind of neat and tidy. Now in order to get this sort of nice fluffy finish you need to snip all these seam allowances. Now you can see I've started doing a little bit here and you need some pretty heavy duty scissors for doing this snipping because just regular scissors would struggle to be able to do that. So what we're going to do is so you would normally do all your piecing that you're going to do and then this is a great job to do while you're sitting down watching quilting videos maybe or perhaps just some TV or chatting with someone. 
um because it, it's a little bit hard going to just sit and just snip but great if you've got some other distraction going on so these scissors i've got are designed specifically for this sort of heavy duty snipping and i'm just going to snip now you don't want to snip your sewing thread you just want to snip in very close to it so into that half inch seam allowance and roughly every half an inch or so going along the seam line so now what i'm doing here is cutting through both lots not just sort of one lot of stuff all at once and that's why you need some fairly sturdy scissors for this and you need to do all the seams so it does take quite a long time if you've got a bigger quilt but it's a fun quilt in the end so you can make other things with this um, I've seen bags and uh, all sorts of things just using this technique um, and these squares are quite large and because I've sewn the batting and everything into the seam I don't feel any need to do any extra quilting um, some people might prefer to do a little bit of quilting as well so you're just snipping away and these seams here where you've opened it out um, for the join just snip in fairly close that on both sides and then you can hold it together to continue snipping along your seam now just remember not to snip into your actual sewing because it will all fall apart if you do um, so I won't continue with that any longer now but you can see the general idea and that's going to fluff up now then what we do is we throw the whole thing in a washing machine and if you've got a tumble dryer a tumble dryer as well it's not essential to have the dryer but if it's ever likely to go into a dryer it's probably a good idea to do that right at the beginning of its life and then it's kind of all done so that's what I've done with this quilt I've had put it through the washing machine and I popped it through the the tumble dryer as well and they've just all fluffed up really nicely and it just adds a little bit of texture as I said little people love to sit and fiddle with things like that and um, not only just little people probably um, but it's a very snugly quilt and with all that nice smoothness on one side and because I've used the flannels it's got a very snugly feel now just to go around the edge I've just done a traditional binding I cut my binding two and a half inches wide and bound around the edge but I know that uh, some people prefer to do a line of sewing around on their squares on the edge and snip in that half an inch and and so it will just fluff up and be a raggy edge as well but for me personally I quite like the bound edge so that's how I make my raggy quilts and enjoy thank you <laughs>